Well, let's talk a little bit about fantasy scenarios and how much Gary Davenport can f- himself. <laughs> Sorry, you don't have to use that. In a world where sports is going to multiple platforms, be sure to check out hashtag sports on Sportscaster and YouTube. (laughs) I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Not really. All right. So uh, for those of you, uh, it's it's actually a couple weeks old, but it was something that I wanted to get to, and then you got kidnapped, and then I paid the ransom, which was, oddly enough, 10 Boston cream donuts. (laughs) Um, Gary Davenport, he's an NFL analyst. I don't know if you guys may have seen this. Uh, Nick Wolton put it up on uh, Bill's Wire. Okay. Uh, that's, where I, that's where I caught it. Uh, he had stated, now I'm not joking, he had stated if you built the best 53-man roster of the Bills, Jets, and Dolphins, and they played the Patriots, the Patriots would win 8 out of 10. Now, I understand that all three of those teams are rebuilding. Yeah. I completely understand that. And the Patriots just won the Super Bowl. I understand yeah. that. However, the talent that you have of those 270 players mm-hmm. that you could build a 53-man dynasty. Just ridiculous to me that that's where, that's where they think they are. So let, my question is this. Who would you, if you had to combine those rosters, mm-hmm. who would you put? I got to be honest with you. Going up and down the Bills roster, I'm probably keeping a lot more Bills than I'm taking Jets and Dolphins players. And we're not being biased either. No. We're taking more no. Bills than everybody else because the Jets are in a rebuild. Dolphins completely yeah. shut it it's, down. If, any, if we ever get criticism for stuff, it's the fact that we are, we don't, we sometimes come off like we're not supportive of what the Bills are doing, Right. There, yeah. I think we get criticism. That's usually what it is. Um, but we try and be as objective as possible about a lot of this stuff. So. Yeah, I try not. I try to temper my expectations with super fandom. Yeah. I know when I talk I to you on the phone, I don't temper them. No. No. But, and then and it's, it's the same way with you. But mm-hmm. we're like, listen, let's try to see the flip side of this. What? Right. Not what could go wrong, but what's the... What are, what are the most likely scenarios to play out? Yeah. Right? Well, let's get to it then. All right. So, why don't we start uh, from top to bottom? We'll just go QB, running back, three receivers. So, let's go three wide receivers, offensive line. Um, and then, are we including a fullback? Uh, no, because it's not a real position. Okay, great. Let's move on. <laughs> Good God. I'm looking at Miami's depth chart. I, there might be two players I want off the whole team. I want like six of them. Okay. Yeah. No, we definitely have to have this conversation. All right. Quarterback. So, we have Sam Darnold versus Ryan Fitzpatrick. Versus Josh, Josh Allen. Allen. We're taking Allen here, right? I don't know. There's only one guy in there oh who's actually god. beating the Patriots. Oh my god. There's Is only one guy that's beating the Patriots. Fitz? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I'm not taking Fitz. I'm just okay. saying, I, I was I was so waiting for you to bring up Fitz's name because I was thinking, hmm, which one of these guys has actually beaten the Patriots before? Miami put out a tweet where they took the they took a video of, of the three quarterback jerseys and like the jerseys are ready and they scanned from left to right and they've been posted for an hour and it had like eight retweets. <laughs> it was horrendous. Oh. So of course I retweeted it and I put the comment, no, oh, they they spelled Fitzmagic wrong. <laughs> oh my god. Yep. That's glorious. All right, just- so I'm taking Allen. I'm here. taking Allen all yeah. day. Uh, I like Darnold, um, yeah. but uh, and, but this is this is truly debatable. Like if there it are, is. there's a homer call, we're probably a bit more optimistic on Allen than everybody oh, yeah. else. Yeah. So I, if there is a homer call, this is probably it. Well, which offensive coordinator are we taking? Are we taking Gase? Are, are, are we taking Bevel? Are we taking Dable? Or I'm taking who the hell's Miami? That's I don't care really what. I don't care. Who, who it is, I'm taking Jim Bob Cooter, the running back coach from the Jets. Jim Bob Cooter. As I my... love Jim Bob. Jim Bob's the best. He's really great. What a great name. I know. Uh, so, quarterback, we're going to go with Josh Allen. Okay, obviously. so that's fine. Homer. Yeah, I'll take that one on the chin. I mean, I'll take it on the chin. That's fine. A lot of people are going to say Darnold. They could. A lot of non-Bills players are going to say Bills fans. They'll have a legit 
leg to stand on with Donald, yeah. and that's fine. I understand yeah. that. People but I, might... I think if you're ranking the top three, you're going uh, Allen or Darnold, Fitzpatrick third. Yeah. Okay. And that's fine. I'm just telling we'll you. We'll take that. I'm just, I'm just saying. Okay. I'm just saying it. All right. Fitzpatrick's the only guy that's beaten the Patriots. I really say. <sighs> God, it's horrendous for you to say. <laughs> okay, so running back. <laughs> now, Bills have a couple here to pick from. Bell. You're taking Bell I'm taking over Bell. everybody else. I'm taking Bell. And, uh, I mean, your only competition there is Devin Singletary, LaShawn McCoy, Frank Gore, Kalen Balaj, or Kenyon Drake. I think Le'Veon Bell takes them all. Yes. Yeah. Le'Veon. Now, I don't expect Bell to put up numbers. Like, you had done a, uh, you had done a collaboration video with Jets Talk 24-7. Mm-hmm. And um, we, we had talked about, uh, you had talked about Bell, and uh, his numbers that he put up in Pittsburgh were... Gaudy. Unbelievable. Yes. He'll never get that kind of production. Anymore. I don't think he will, no. But the fact of the, the type of player that he is coming in at 26 years old, uh, yeah. the skill set that he possesses, the things that you can do with him, not to say you can't do those things with a McCoy or a Drake. Right. Um, but I just think right now, if we had to try to pick the best running back on this team. Yeah, it's Bell. It's That's Bell. All right, let's move to a wide receiver. Got to take three. Um, so Bill's top three would effectively be John Brown, Cole Beasley, Zay Jones. Yeah. And then you have, uh, I mean, you could, some people will say Foster. I understand that. Right. Then you have Anderson, Anunwa, and Crowder yep. for the Jets. And then you have Parker. Albert Wilson. Albert Wilson from the Kansas City Chiefs. And Kenny Stills. And Kenny Stills. Okay. Yeah. I, it, it's ugly. <laughs> That's ugly. Well, I'm taking, <laughs> I'm taking Brown and Point. I know, right? <laughs> Um, the package that is Devontae Parker is really fascinating. Giggity. But he's, I mean, the, he caught like 24 passes last year. You are just enamored with guys' packages. He brings a very unique skill set. Parker does. Very special shadow skills. Very special Make me a nightmare for people like you. My daughter, go now. I will find you. And I will bring you 10 Bavarian cream donuts. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like Devontae Parker because of his skill set. Kenny yeah. Stills is just a burner. <clears throat> right. Uh, Roddy Anderson is just a burner. Right. Uh, I think you got to take Beasley because he's one of the, he's going to be your slot guy. Yep. Uh, I think you take Devontae Parker, and I think you take Quincy Anunwa. So you're going to take Anunwa and Parker over John Brown? I took... That's what you're doing. I'm taking one from each because I don't like the selection I'm given. Okay. And I just I, maybe I'm insane for for doing that. I, I like I, Beasley in the slot better than any slot guy they got than Crowder yeah. and. Uh, yeah. So the, here's the way that I see this, right? So I would take John Brown and Cole Beasley, but John Brown to Kenny Stills is where I'm a little stuck, right? That, that's the okay. close one to me is John Brown to Kenny Stills because they're both going to bring that deep speed dynamic. So John Brown to Kenny Stills is where I'm stuck. I'm going to give it to Brown. Okay. okay? Um, but then I'm taking a possession receiver because you've got Beasley in the slot. I want a possession receiver. That's Quincy Anunua. Didn't I pick Anunua? You did pick Anunua. Oh, we, right. just, we just disagreed on Stills we just versus Parker. At skills ver- skill is Stills versus Brown Parker versus, versus Parker. Brown. Okay, yeah. okay, gotcha. Yeah, so I'm going to give it to John Brown. If it's me. Um, so you have Beasley, Brown, and Anunwa. Yeah, that's who I'm taking. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's that's bold. bold Tight right? end. Mike Gusecki. What, what a desert. Gusecki's third on the depth chart. He is? You could trade for him right now. Yeah, Dwayne Allen is number one on the depth chart in Miami. Uh, are we taking, uh, well, is suspension with the Jets, Chris Herndon? Chris Herndon. <laughs> Are we taking suspension into account? Yeah, no. No, this is fantasy land. Okay. I, then I take Herndon then. You take Herndon he, over. Look at what we have to choose from. I get that. You got Gasecki, Dwayne Allen, who's 106 years old. You have uh, the, the graveyard of tight ends in New York. Yeah. Uh, and then you got. You wouldn't take Tyler Croft over all those guys? Oh, my God. Do I have to? Can I take a fourth wide out? <laughs> Well, he picked a noon walk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's basically a, a tight end. A noon could be my age bag. Yeah, he's just basically a tight end. Um, 
Yeah, it's that tight end position. The more we keep talking about the offensive skill players. Damn, you killed that coffee. The more Davenport. Holy God. What? Ah, I forget. The more we keep talking about the skill positions, I think Davenport was onto something. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not taking Gusecki. I'm not taking Herndon. I'm not taking Dwayne Allen. Um, I'm taking Tyler Croft over all of them. Okay. All right. Yeah, I didn't know we were taking injuries. He'll be back. He'll be back. Uh, wow. So your th- your four wide set is John Brown, Cole Beasley, Tyler Croft, and Quincy Anunua. Yeah. So do you just hate Zay Jones or something? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. A, hey, listen. Got to catch passes to keep jobs. Yeah. Wow. Okay. All right. So the offensive line. This is where it gets interesting for me. It's a little dicey. Yeah. This is where because I didn't really like anybody from the Jets. Uh, Even though there's a, Raider, a former Raider on the Jets and a former Raider on the Bills. Yeah, let's see here. Mitch Morse, best center in the AFC yeah, East. Yeah, agreed. Boom. Agreed. Morse right in the middle. No. Time out. Time out. He's not the best center. What, Pouncey? No. Who? Who just came out of retirement? Stop it. Khalil? Khalil. Really? Khalil versus Morris is an interesting conversation as to who's the best center it's in the It's very series. difficult to snap the shotgun with a walker. I'm just telling you. <laughs> I think just out of youth, you give it to Morris. We're playing 10 games against the Homer! Big- homer. I'm the homer. I'm t- I would take Khalil over He's Morris. got three out of four skill positions. We're talking to win two games. Well, 10. You will win two. If you- yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll go with Jan Morse. That's fine. All That's right, fine. Morse. Uh, yeah, I'll go with Jan Morse. Left tackle. Uh, Kelvin Beecham. Kelvin Beecham, nope. Laramie Tunsil, or Deion Dawkins. I'm going with Laramie Tunsil. I'm going with Laramie Tunsil, too. I like Tunsil. Uh, I like Tunsil uh, coming out of college. Okay, left guard. You have Spain, Osemele, and whoever's in Miami. Uh, Michael Dieter. I'm going to go with uh, Spain. Spain. Next. So we have Tunsil, Spain, Morse, right guard. Dion Calhoun in Miami. Brian Winters. Ford. Ford. Yep, without a doubt. Yep. Right tackle, uh, Brandon Shell versus Jesse Davis. Oh, oh, Jordan Mills. Time to second. Time to second. <laughs> So the offense... So your uh, offensive line only has Laramie Tunsil uh, yeah, and Quincy Le- Anunua and Le'Veon Bell. Your offensive line? Or your offensive... Yeah, your offense. Yeah. Everything else is Bills. Yeah. Except for Khalil. You want to put Khalil at center. I think it's debatable. So I... <sighs> if you give Bills fans the choice right now, one year with Ryan Khalil or four years with Mitch Morris, who are they taking right now? Four with Morris? No! No, they're not. Are we Mario. talking Sands concussion? No, we're not. T- we're talking right now. If the Bills had a choice between Ryan Khalil or Mitch Morris from a Bills fan perspective, everything right now as it is, would they take one year of Khalil versus four years of Morris? They're taking the one year of Khalil because the guy, the guy's health, healthy for, I mean, for the level of player that he is just, at this stage of his he career. He just got the senior discount at Denny's. Good for him. Love that joke. I, know. I cracked that joke last time we were on that street. Actually, right on this block. It's true. That's what reminded me of it. Yeah. So I, I unfortunately, I have Devonte Parker, Le'Veon Bell, mm-hmm. and Chris Herndon, and Quincy Nunwa on my offense. And and Larry Mitunsel. And Larry Mitunsel. Yeah. But you have Tunsil, Bell, Tunsil, I, Bell, and Nunwa are the only ones. Yeah. You call me a homer. (laughs) Shifting gears to the defense side, which I think this is going to be intriguing. There's only one guy that I would want from Miami, so this is not going to be as intriguing as as you think. Uh, Howard. You're not Fitzpatrick? From Miami? Minka? No. No. She's so adorable. (laughs) You wouldn't want Kiko? Get out of here. You wouldn't want Kiko? No. No Kiko in his bar in his Ken doll uniform. Um, 
I got a, I got a rip in my jersey. Somebody run to Toys R Us. <laughs> <laughs> now, as we go to defense, yeah, very easy to say the entire Bills right now. Yeah, sure. That argument can be made. I, yeah, it is. It that is. Argument but can be made. that would not be very interesting. Nope, I agree with so that. So we're going to make it interesting. Yep, that's fine. 3-4 three, or 4-3? Four, three. Uh, we got to go base 4-3 because it's if you're playing the, Patri- the Patriots uh, and the Jets are the only 3-4 teams. Miami's Miami is. Miami's 3-4? Check that. Check that on me. Okay. Because Flores just came from New England. He's a defensive coordinator in New England. Uh, He's got, they uh, have him listed as a base 4-3 on okay. the ESPN.com. Right. Okay, we'll go with that then. Even so though I, think I, think, I think Flores is coming over. He ran a 3-4 with Belichick. ESPN has him listed as a 4-3. Okay. It's one, we're one game in. You know, I can't. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, so, as far as, the, as far as the defensive front, just going basically on animalistic things you can do. Yeah. I will go with, um, and this hurts. Mm-hmm. First two right away is Hughes and Oliver. Then I'm going to take Christian Wilkins and Leonard Williams for my other two defensive linemen. Those are my, those are the four guys up yeah. front. Quinn and Williams, you mean? Christian Wilkins and Quinn and Williams. Yes, sorry. Okay. I said Leonard because he's yeah. a defensive end, but yeah. so is Quinn. And. Right. But Quinn and Williams is a defensive end and a. 3-4. Quinn and Williams is playing nose tackle. Is he playing nose now? The ES- oh, yeah. ESPN. Okay. I thought four. they were listed him at defensive. Okay. So I have Wilkins, Williams, Oliver, and Hughes. Okay. So, so I have three rookies. So I'm going Hughes, Oliver, Quinn and Williams, Leonard Williams. That's, that's where I'm going. So you're going half Bills, half Jets. Yeah. There's literally nobody on Miami that I have any interest in on the defense. On the I know line. how scarred you've been with Clemson defensive linemen, but Christian Wilkins is a monster. He is a monster. He's playing DT, according to. He's still a ESPN. monster. Yeah. No, I'm. To me, it's I, I find him. I'll like put Quinn I'll, Williams to be a better player. I'll put Oliver Williams. across from Hughes then, and put those other monsters in the middle. I don't care. You think I care? Yeah, no, I'm passing on. I'm passing on all that. Oliver at defensive end will Reggie Williams somebody as oh, a tackle. God, yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. You want to keep. You want to make sure Oliver gets one on one. Just put him on the outside. He got. He got. That's so terrifying, though. Either of those lines terrifies me. Yeah, it's a good line. That's a good defensive line. Bye, Brady. <laughs> all right, linebackers. Is that the whole idea. How are yeah. we going to pick f- three? Yeah, so Miami has, let's see here, Kiko, Jerome Baker as their strong side, and Sam McQuabagin. How do you pronounce that? I have no idea. You're making it, no worries. Doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, Jordan Jenkins, CJ Mosley, Avery Williams, Brandon Copeland, because again, they're in a 3 4. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not giving up. Um, I'm keeping Edmonds, but I'm putting Edmonds as strong side. Damn it. Is that what you were going to yes. do? You're going to take Mosley, Milano, and Edmonds? Yes. And just move Edmonds to strong side? I don't blame you. That's I'll exactly, put Mosley right in the middle of yeah, that. Yeah, that's exactly You think Mosley can get touched with my defensive front? Yeah, no. It doesn't. <laughs> or Edmonds. You can put Edmonds in the middle. You can put You can put my grandmother in the middle of that. Just put a chair <laughs> right in the middle. Just boom. That's it. Nobody's getting to the second level on that defensive Her line. Kane knocks a pass down. Yeah. What are you worried about? So that front seven. Your front seven. Yeah. Williams, Williams, Oliver, Hughes, mm-hmm. Mosley, Edmonds, and Milano. Yep. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. Uh, I think for the back end, we'll, we'll, I'm going to include a nickel because there are a lot fair. of defensive backs. That's fair. That's right. fair. That's where Minka Fitzpatrick would fall. To me. Yeah, so yeah. I have, uh, as my as my starting two corners, I have Xavier Howard and Trey White. I think yeah. everyone would have that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in the back end, I have... Hyde and Jamal Adams. I'm uh, not a huge Jamal Adams fan. But if you want to talk about a guy who's a hammer, like a Poyer. Oh, yeah. But I think he has an edge on Poyer. Yep. But my nickel guy was either going to be Poyer or Mika Fitzpatrick. See, I really like Eric Rowe. I love Eric Rowe. Yeah. I, But he came from the Patriots. Yeah. They no. picked him up. Well, we liked now, him at draft time. That's yeah. why he was such a he was such a huge uh, 
potential guy, unfortunately. And he played well and played well for the Patriots. Well, I mean, who doesn't in the secondary there? I know, right? I mean, freaking St- uh, Gilmore's an All Pro there. For the record, Gilmore never had to play eight games with a with a, a boot on his hand. Remember when he had the the glove? So dumb. But I think the secondary, when it comes to the safeties, is so intriguing because yeah. I think everyone, would, like I said, I think everyone has Trey White, Xavier, and Howard yeah. as your two corners. Sure. Um, Jamal Adams is intriguing. Mika Fitzpatrick is, is intriguing. And then you have the tandem of Hyde and Poyer. Uh, and then you have Eric Rowe, which, you know, you say you like. Um, wow. I don't I don't know who to pick. You got four guys for two positions. I with the tandem of Hyde and Poirier the way it is, I wouldn't break it up. I'd just bring Minka Fitzpatrick in to play your nickel linebacker role. And then you have Howard playing corner. Yeah, then you have Howard playing corner. Oh. I think that's I think that's the play. With with the discussion we just had, piecing together an offense and a defense. Yeah. Scoring points is a problem. Yeah, but you're not gonna ha- you're not gonna give up any. Well, yeah. I mean but, You can win six nothing. Right, but that's what that's what the Bills are looking at right now. Like, we had an opportunity to rebuild the entire Bills offense, and we added nobody, and they got better. But, I mean, you're still looking at it saying, okay, well, you still got to score points to win. How, how many points are you going to score with, you know, Josh Allen's your quarterback and a combination of Robbie Anderson, Quincy Inunua, John Brown, Cole Beasley. Like, how many points are you really going to score here? I just got all the time in the world to throw. Yeah. You're, you're going to have you're gonna have time, right? Uh, how? But facing that team, how could you realistically Good say luck, the pa- the Patriots would win the, eight out of ten? Bet the under. Bet the under. The over under seventeen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see how you could not win at least four games against the Patriots with that lineup. Two only two games. I think he's he's placing a big emphasis on experience. Is this guy the beat writer for the Patriots, or is he just ESPN guy? Did you get the bio of this guy? Yeah, you ready for this? Sure. Gary's a two-time FSWA award finalist, and his article, To Gronk or Not to Gronk, was honored in 2015 as print article of the year. So let's take the opinion of the guy who wrote an article called To Gronk or Not to Gronk about how many games the Patriots are going to win. But I don't know. Let's take that opinion. Joke show. Gronk or not to Gronk. Gary's about to get all this smoke. Bet watch. she's got a Tom Selleck mustache. That would actually increase his value. 